So the Monterey Public Library welcomes you and Ellen Berhamu, who is an educator and multidisciplinary artist. She finds joy, lifelong learning and service in visual art, music, writing, and teaching. She's a flutist and composer, photographer, poet, and visual artist working in mixed media, graphics, bookmaking, and more. Ellen has taught widely in Boston, Massachusetts and here in Monterey. She holds a master's degree in arts education. As a creative arts specialist, Ellen has decades of experience leading programs that serve families and communities. This art program is generously sponsored by Melissa Pickford in memory of Roland and Glenna Pickford. Again, welcome to this program and thank you, Ellen. Thank you, thank you, Francesca. Hey everyone, happy new year. We're almost there. 2021 is approaching. Uh, let's give a, a, a shout out to 2021. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Before I get started with anything else, I wanted to say, um, I think we are going to offer the option, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Francesca, of um, letting you be unmuted throughout the workshop unless somebody is talking. Um, so um, for me personally, I'm not a big Zoom person. Um, and I love the buzz of the art room or the library community room or other spaces where we are all together uh, talking to each other and uh, sharing. Um, so um, the silence of a Zoom meeting is a little unsettling to me. Um, and um, so if you're comfortable and if it works out for us, um, uh, feel free to unmute um, and we'll just be respectful. Um, and we'll take turns talking and so on and so forth. So I wanted to put that out ahead of time. Um, having said that, welcome again. Um, happy almost new year. Um, again, my name is Ellen, Ellen Barramoon. Um, I'm so happy um, to be joining you in bringing in 2021 with today's workshop. Uh, I'm going to be guiding you in making some beautiful and unique um, lanterns to celebrate the season. Um, I guess it goes without saying that we've had a, a tough and challenging year. Um, personally, um, I believe that there's always a silver lining. Um, sometimes it's a little hard to find, but I feel that um, resilience, kindness, connection, those things, those are some of the positive um, outcomes that we've um, witnessed from these, these tough times. So um, as we come together, as a community and we share our creative energies, um, I feel like um, we uplift all of our spirits and uh, hopefully we will bring in 2021 with joy and um, uh, a better year ahead. So um, uh, one more thing I just wanna uh, not forget to mention is a huge, huge thanks to the Monterey Public Library, um, particularly Francesca Garibaldi also Inga Waite, um, they have been working tirelessly behind the scenes um, to keep the Monterey Public Library an active uh, part of our community to keep us all connected. And I, I feel that they're unsung um, heroes or heroines. Um, so thank you. Um, and thank you again for making this workshop possible. Um, so let's see. Um, I am going to try my very best to share um, some images to get us started on our lantern making. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try my best to not um, uh, lose you as I go to my screen. Just gonna show you a couple of images. So give me just a moment here. Here, okay. Give us a moment. Share the screen. Okay. And and now. Are we on a full screen, folks? Oops, get ahead of myself there. Okay, can yeah. everyone see what's on the screen there? Yes, that's really pretty. Okay, great. <laughs> that would make a nice screen saver, right? <laughs> so um, in the spirit of lantern making, um, I was looking around online for some images of lanterns uh, that are made um, different parts of the world. Um, um, this is not an art history um, uh, or uh, cultural uh, lecture or anything, don't worry. But uh, I just wanted to say that there is um, a beautiful tradition 
behind um, the lanterns. Um, we think of the winter holiday season as a time of light, um, lanterns, candles, um, even bonfires, and of course our electric light displays. Um, they're connected with many faith and cultural traditions um, across the world. Of course, communities celebrate religious holidays, but um, many people also celebrate the winter solstice, um, which is the shortest period of daylight hours during the year. So in ancient times, um, when people didn't have all the technology we have today, of course, um, they um, were very attuned to the seasons. And um, uh, so they marked the winter solstice and the beginning of the winter with ceremonies and different celebrations. And so light um, symbolized rebirth, um, hope amid the darkness and, um, you know, uh, kind of prayers and wishes um, for the sun to return um, and for the days to grow longer and um, to kind of cast out um, anything bad from the previous year. So uh, we've carried a lot of those traditions forward over time, um, even though some sometimes we forget the history. But uh, I think it's a nice uh, tradition to remember um, as we said about making lanterns. So um, on the screen, you'll see a bunch of lanterns. Um, I won't go through all of them, but um, on my left, I'm guessing on your right, I see what looks like paper bags. Those are luminarias. I heard. Uh, they're paper bags with candles inside and people decorate them in different ways. So um, here in the middle, in my middle, um, uh, you'll see a lantern um, actually on this page, quite a few that are similar to what we're going to work on today. Um, they have a structure um, and sometimes they're made of just uh, sticks and twigs that are gathered from outdoors. Um, and those are really fun to make. Um, the only thing about them is that they stick together much more easily with hot glue and we didn't want to go that route today. So, <laughs> uh, so we're doing a modified version of that. Um, so I'm just going to scroll through. Um, this is a really cool um, festival I found out about, the burning of the clocks. And if you can see that image, uh, there are lanterns here um, that are constructed in a similar way. Um, mm. England um, seems to be a place where the winter solstice is really celebrated with a bang. They have uh, parades and uh, bonfires and all kinds of things. And these folks, um, apparently they, uh, they have a parade that goes to the beach. They wear costumes representing clocks and time and they go with these lanterns that are hanging. Um, and uh, then they take the lanterns and burn them um, and that symbolizes um, all of the fears and um, the things that will be passed into the flames to prepare for a new, um, a new year, okay? Um, so here are some other um, types of lanterns. These are tin cans punched with holes. You can try that at home. Um, this is a huge, uh, probably a willow uh, or bamboo lantern or some kind of um, wood that's uh, flexible. And this one over here, I don't know if you can see what I'm pointing to, but I think it's called a parol from the Philippines. And that's a very traditional lantern. And then we have uh, lanterns from China and Japan, which really started um, apparently the um, lantern making traditions long, long ago, okay? And then here's a neat parade. Very cool lanterns. So if you'll see these in this picture, uh, what people are carrying, you'll see that these have taken on some really neat shapes, some rounded shapes and so on. Um, and so what I'm imagining is that people were constructing with willow. So if you think of the willow tree and those long, long um, flexible branches, <clears throat> pardon me, of the willow, um, they can be shaped in so many ways. And I wish we could have done that today. Um, it would have been fun, um, but I went on a hunt for willow branches and I didn't get too far. So <laughs> I thought we'd take a shortcut. And uh, today we're gonna be uh, using um, skewers, <laughs> barbecue skewers. Um, so uh, we'll make do with what we have. Okay, last slide here. Again, some um, willow lanterns and they, they call those willows uh, withies, which is kind of cool. 
Okay, so that is the end of my very short uh, tour. I'm going to stop that share and I'm going to get back online with you. Okay, can everybody see me? We good? Okay, uh, shout out if you wish, unmute if you wish. Okay, so um, let me just ask you quickly. Um, first of all, can everyone hear me okay? Yep. Yes. Good. Okay, perfect. Yes. All right. Um, I'm going to be talking a lot. Um, sorry if I'm looking down. My camera is uh, way up high, so I want to make eye contact with you, but um, I'm I'm also uh, looking down here. So um, I'm going to start out talking and giving you a lot of instructions as we get started making our lanterns. Um, and then um, we're gonna take a breather and um, everyone will probably, uh, you'll probably be working on your own for a while. We may put a little holiday music on in the background. Um, if at any point, if I'm going too fast, if you have a question, um, having trouble with something, please uh, feel free to stop me and um, you know, others may have the same or similar questions, okay? Um, did everyone, uh, take a look at the supply list that went out. Can you give me, uh, I can't see everyone on my screen right now, but um, I'm hoping that everyone has some basic supplies to get us started, okay? Um, so here's what you're gonna need. We're gonna do this lantern making in stages today, okay? And the very first stage is the assembly, okay? So at this point in time, um, you don't need any wet glue in front of you on your table. Um, if you want, I'm going to start angling my camera down here. Uh, let's see if we can focus in. Okay. So, uh, sorry if you can see my laptop here. It's a little difficult to get the perfect angle. How is that working? Can you see my hands and my screen and everything? Yeah, it looks good, Ellen. Okay, very good. Okay, so... Um, if you want, um, now I just have a heavy uh, garbage bag kind of clamped onto my kitchen table here. Um, if you want to um, cover your work surface now, you may, um, you don't really need to do that until a little bit later, but up to you, okay? So what you are gonna need. I'm sorry, I have a quick question. Sure. So uh, all I knew about really was the bag. Uh, my mom set this up for me so that I would be able to. Okay. Also, uh, based on age, do you need parental guidance at all? Parental guidance? Um, sure. Do you need an uh, adult there if you're younger? Are, are you asking me if you need an adult there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Um, yeah. So the reason um, for that, um, as we're starting out, if you can see um, this, this um, lovely uh, wooden barbecue skewer, it has a pretty sharp point and we are gonna be um, for the most part cutting those points off, okay? Um, and I sure don't want anyone to get injured. I, I don't think they're dangerous, um, but depending on how you snip them, they can go flying. So I was gonna coach you in that. The other thing is that a little later on, um, it can be handy to have another pair of hands. Um, but if you, um, I don't know how old you are. Um, I'm, I'm looking at my screen now. I can see a few folks up. Um, but if you are comfortable and feel safe enough in those things I described, especially um, cutting this wood and being careful that, uh, you know, no wood is flying out or anything, watching out for splinters. Um, if you're okay with that and your um, parent or family member is okay with that, then um, we should be good to go. Um, that... Also, uh, do we need any other materials? Yes, we do. So uh, there was a supply list. Um, did you happen to pick up a kit at the library or not? Yes. You got a kit. Okay. So um, I'm going to go through that as we move along. So the essential things are in the kit, um, sticks, tape, glue, um, some tissue paper, things like that. You will need um, some kind of a little tray or a bowl. It could be almost anything. Um, you're going to be mixing some glue later on. We'll get to that. Um, and uh, you should have gotten a foam brush in your kit. Um, so most of the things you need will be there. Okay. And I'll go over that as we go along, but you should have enough to get started. Okay. 
Any anyone else have any uh, questions as we get moving? We're good. OK. <laughs> All right. So um, OK. So first things first, um, as I was mentioning, these lovely um, barbecue skewers um, do have a sharp point. For the most part, we're going to want to cut these points off. OK. And so um, I think the safe way to do that, um, if you have a trash can around, fine. If not, I would say aim down. You don't want these little points flying out in the air. OK, so I'm just going to do a quick demo. And uh, they're a little hard, but not too hard. So if you have a good, strong pair of scissors, just you know, give it a little elbow grease there. OK, and you just want to cut the very tip off for now. OK. Um, I do them one by one as needed. Um, we are going to start out building a base. So um, there's a couple of ways to do that um, shape wise. OK, I'm just going to hold sticks together. If you want a square base, you're going to want four of these. And I'll go over that in a moment. So if you want a square base, you're going to want to chop off the tips of four sticks. And what I like to do is to tap them on my table just to make sure that I'm cutting them pretty evenly. And if you have a pencil handy, or pen or marker, anything you like, if you want to make a little line, um, the only reason, these sure don't have to be perfect, um, but the only reason to even them out is if you want your lantern to be more or less, you know, um, standing up neatly and not you know, too lopsided and so on. So go ahead and uh, start chopping off the tips. Again, point down. And if you see any little splintery things, uh, you know, look at the tip. If anything looks a little splintered, just just give it a little a little quick trim. Okay. Oh, see, I did what I just what I was saying, and I almost uh, got my computer screen there. OK. So once you have uh, three or four of these, um, we'll get started. Okay, I'm going to do one more. All right, um, so that should be a pretty quick process. So um, at this point, I'm going to hold up some of the sample lanterns. Um, you probably saw them um, as we started the workshop, um, but I'm just going to show you a few things. So a couple of ideas, and yours can be completely different than mine. This one's hard to get in the in the camera. It's so big and tall. But as you can see, this one has a square base. So what I did is I just used four of these all cut to the same length. Um, I left them actually just the way they are. Uh, They're roughly 10 inches, okay? So that's one option. We'll talk about these legs later, okay? Um, here's one that I was experimenting with. Um, and I trimmed down the sticks. I wanted a square base, but I wanted it tall and a little bit smaller. So um, I think I cut these down to about six inches each. Okay. I'm um, going to show you two more variations. This one also started with a square base. Okay. And finally, This one has a triangular base. So I think this one's kind of cool. Originally, I was going to make a square base here, and I didn't really like it in a big lantern. So I smushed it together, and I ended up like this. OK? So for now, let's say that those are the choices. Because again, we don't have flexible sticks. We can't make a circle with these. So what I'd like you to do is um, 
plan out um, what kind of shape and base you'd like, okay? And based on that, we're gonna start building our base by joining our sticks together with tape. I've done one just to, so you can see what they're gonna start out like, okay? So here's a tip, uh, this is something I learned. Um, and I don't wanna confuse anyone, but <laughs> um, so there are different ways to put this together. Um, I like to take the two vertical sticks. Okay, I'm gonna hold them upright for now. And I put a horizontal stick on top. So this is like the outside. See what I mean? I'm gonna hold it like that. So this one is kind of the inside and when I make a corner, I'm putting the one that goes horizontally, I'm gonna put that on top, okay? So why does that matter? It doesn't matter a lot. I could move it to here and have this on the inside. The thing you wanna do is be consistent. Again, this is gonna flip over and make your base, okay? So if I change them around, if I have this on the inside, and I have this up here, your lantern will come out kind of crickety. <laughs> okay, does that make sense to anyone? I hope uh, you're, hope I'm not being uh, confusing in any way. So just, no, it makes sense. yeah, so you're just gonna be consistent, whichever stick goes outside, put it on the outside each time. Now tape, here's the part that gets, um, it's not really hard, it can just be um, a little learning curve to get it going, but um, um, now I have really wide tape. Um, you wanna pull off roughly two inches, it could be like the length of your thumb, something like that. And if you'd like, uh, you can put a bunch of pieces of tape, like on the edge of your table, if you can see mine over here, you can just line them up for yourself, okay? Um, or do three or four at a time so you don't have to keep tearing. Um, if you have skinnier tape, it's actually even a little bit easier. Um, sometimes I give this like a little fold and I just tear it. So I've got a skinnier piece, if you can see that. How is the lighting on my end? Is it too bright for you? Hopefully you can see me okay. So, <laughs> The skinnier pieces are really helpful. Um, you can use some of both. So here's what we're gonna do. Um, I'm lining these up, okay? And I, I like to start my tape. Um, let me get going here. Okay, so we want this tape to be sitting on, we want this the tape and the stick to connect to each other, okay? I'm gonna try turning my light off here um, um, in just a moment, because I think our tape and our wood are a little hard to see. Let's see if a little less light, does that help you at all to see? Probably not much. Anyway, um, your stick is gonna go about roughly one inch in, and you wanna make sure that some of that tape is firmly pressed on to your stick, okay? is we really need that to be stuck together. Okay, now we're gonna make a corner, okay? We're gonna line this up and just slow, ask me to slow down if you're having any trouble with it, okay? We want these to touch, okay? We want them to touch, we want the tape to touch both sticks, okay? And you start wrapping it around wrap it around as tightly as you can, and then go for another piece of tape and kind of angle, I like to use a diagonal, go over that corner joint, okay? And you want that tape to be really stuck to your sticks. You don't want it really bumpy. Um, ultimately, we're gonna cover this with paper, okay? So wiggle it around, make sure you're making a really strong connection there. Excuse me. And um, then, I'm sorry? If you're doing a triangle, how do you make the angle there? A triangle uh, great, base? Great, great question. Um, 
you can just bend it. This is still going to be flexible. You see what I'm doing? Yes. Okay. Still flexible. So when you get, that's a great question. When you get to the bottom piece, um, you know, just bend as needed. Does that make sense? Thank you. Sure. So each time uh, before you go on to a new connection, again, make sure that you're really secure here. And I like to kind of crisscross the tape a few times and then do a little test and make sure that your joint, I'm going to call it a joint, is very, very secure. Because later on when we start applying wet glue to this, um, we don't want the tape kind of flopping around. Okay, and it's very flexible. So um, doesn't have to be gorgeous or anything, but it has to be secure. Okay. So I'm going to reinforce mine one more time here, and then I'm going to move on to a new one. And let's see here. Lost the end of my tape. Okay. As you move along, if it's easier to lay your sticks down on the table as you work, that might help. Anybody having trouble with any of this or are you good? I'm not doing so well with this. Can you hold okay. when you're when you're doing it? Can you hold it closer to I can't I just get this big blob. Yes, I understand. Yeah, this is this is kind of the tricky part. I think this is the hardest um, and I don't want to sound discouraging, but it's the, the trickiest part. So um, so here, here's what I've got so far. I'm working in slow motion here. So here's my end. I'm putting this on top and I'm about to apply tape. So, um, pick a piece. Okay. Can you see this? I'm going to apply the stick to the tape about one inch in. You see that? Okay. I know these are almost the same color, which makes it hard, but can you see what I'm doing there? Okay, so you've got that. Again, make sure that you really stick the tape to the surface of the stick, okay? But you wanna be able to see the corner, okay? So I wanna put these end to end. Are you getting a pretty good view on that? End to end so that you have, you know, like a, a, a right angle, I guess is what you call it in geometry, right? and then start wrapping. And don't worry about whether it looks bumpy for now. It will look bumpy when you get started, okay? Just keep wrapping. It's gonna be kind of messy. And then you're gonna kind of keep on wrapping, keep wrapping, squish it together. So this should be a little flexible for now, okay? And then just use your fingers and work that tape into the corner. Work it in, press it, squeeze out any uh, air that might be stuck in there. And when you have a connection of some sort, I would take, tear off a skinnier piece of your tape and I like to angle it kind of diagonally. So I might start from the inside corner. Can you see that? 
start from the inside corner and just wrap around the joint right where you want it to be really, really solid. And just keep wrapping and smooshing. Okay. Excuse me. Uh-huh, sure. Hi, um, how many skewers do we need for like the whole thing in total? Uh, well, that really depends on your shape and how tall it is. So okay. um, I was going to say, I think your kit gave you, if you picked up a kit from the library, you probably got about 20 something, 25, 26 skewers. That'll be more than enough for one lantern. Um, it, it depends on how tall you want to go. And uh, all, also later on, we're going to be building in some inner uh, support. So you'll need some sticks for that as well. Okay. okay. All right. Thank so, you. You're welcome. Um, who has uh, their base almost done? Um, I want to, let's see, I want to, I think what I want to do is get out of my big screen. Let's see if I can do this gracefully. Gallery view. See if I can do that for a minute. Okay. So I can see how we're all doing here. So, all right. So take your time, no rush. Okay, I see somebody's message coming up. We're complete with our bases. That's great. Okay. Um, I am going to try to get off back to my view. There I go. Okay, so you're ahead of me. <laughs> I'm going to just finish my base. I'm going to work with you for a little while and uh, so I can keep up with everybody else's pace. Okay, let me secure this. So after you have your base all set up, Again, um, give, it a, give it a test, a wiggle test. So if anything feels like that stick might be slipping out from its tape base, please, now is the time to secure it, okay? And again, I like to go in from the corner. Once I have my, my little shape put together, I go in with a new piece of tape, a skinny one preferably. I go in from the corner itself, I go under, and I wrap that joint and I just make sure that everything is really glommed together. Okay. And then press out any air. Press really hard. And it should be good to go. Okay. Um, I'm keeping my screen uh, so that I can see myself, so I can make sure that I'm, um, uh, you know, showing you everything in my camera. Um, can everybody uh, give me a shout out? I can't see all of us on the screen right now. Can you give me a shout out and let me know if your bases are all set or if you need more time? I'll say a couple thumbs up. Okay. Just holler, you yell out at me, it's fine. <laughs> Unmute, I, just, I just realized that I accidentally got distracted and now I'm ahead. That you got the what? I accidentally got distracted and then I went a bit further. Oh, okay, no worries at all. If you if you want to plunge ahead, that's I have, okay. <laughs> I have this so far. Okay, so um, shall, I I go, shall I go on talking about the next step? Is that okay? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, so I'm going to chop off a few more points. So we are going to be building um, the height of our lantern in just a minute, but we have to do something important, and that is to um, fortify our base. Okay, um, so it really depends on the dimensions. Um, in this case, um, my stick is not long enough. What I want to do is make some kind of a cross piece. Um, that goes from corner to corner. See what I mean? I'm going to do like a big X in the middle. And let me hold up one to show you the kind of the finished product. So this, this is the bottom that I'm holding up to the camera. So I'm going to be making an X that goes from corner to corner. Okay. And 
The reason for that is two reasons, actually. Uh, stability, um, that helps your lantern hold together. The other thing is that we are going to be putting in a place for a candle and we need something to rest it on. And so in a little while, we're gonna, uh, there's many ways to do it. There's not you know, a rule about it, but I like to glue on a little piece of cardboard and this gives it a place to rest. Um, let's see if I can show you. And no, not on that one, sorry. If I can pull one up here. Yeah. So uh, let's see if I can give you an angle here. I don't know if you can see that, but I just made a very quick base for the candle that we're gonna put inside. It's to, I just taped this one on, you can glue it, and it has a little paper towel, uh, rather uh, uh, toilet tissue uh, roll, just a section of one of those, and that will hold your candle steady. So again, that is um, why we wanna have a cross piece here. So what do we do if you have a big square and this is not long enough to reach, you combine two sticks, okay? In this case, um, you probably wanna measure them and just see what you need. Um, sometimes I leave the sharp point on so that I can go like this, point to point, and it's a little neater, but you don't have to do it however you want when you decide you're gonna you're gonna put a piece of tape and hold two sticks together okay and trim them to the size you need to make your cross pieces okay everybody good with that i'm just gonna glom these together So I have attached two pieces and now I'm going to fit them to the inside. When you go to uh, cut your, your stick, not to cut the point off, but to actually cut it, um, I get the stick inside my scissors and I kind of bend down, just wiggle it down and it should snap off right, right away neatly. And then again, trim off any, any splinters, okay? So I wanna go corner to corner. And we're gonna be making an X shape. Ellen? Yes. I'm the troublesome triangle person, so. <laughs> no worries at all. <laughs> what do you do if you have a triangle, right? <laughs> I did one crossbar. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see. I'm looking for who is uh, who's Mary speaking. Jo. Mary Jo. Mary Jo. Let's see. Okay. Uh, okay. I can see you. Okay. Well, yeah. I put one, but then it's going to cross. Like That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, this is a flexible art form. <laughs> I think you're you're figuring it out perfectly. That 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 should work perfectly. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that works. Okay. So um, when you get to taping these in, again, we want everything touching. We want the corners connected. So I go from the inside. I slide my tape underneath. You see what I'm doing? I've got my tape under my structure here. I place my stick on top of the tape. I push it into the corner as hard as I can. And I start just again, kind of making sure that every connection is really solid there. Push it all together. Don't be shy with the tape. Okay. I definitely have not been shy with the tape. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> This uh, this masking tape is your best friend in this project. You know, if we had um, you know been live, uh, we might have uh, we might have done tree branches and we might have taken out the hot glue gun. But um, since we're 
since we're in our living rooms or kitchens um, or our work room, uh, we'll do it the old fashioned way. Okay. Yeah. So this should be, you know, pretty, pretty tight fit. Again, I'm putting tape under my corner. Uh, it's a little awkward to hold it up in the air. I'll start here. I do it on the diagonal. Oops, not the best tape in the world. Can you see that? I'm starting like that, kind of crosswise. And now I'm gonna place the stick onto the tape and into the corner. And then I'm gonna start folding it over. Once you get the hang of this um, maneuver here, I'll call it, you know, just angling things and getting them stuck in there, it's not really hard. Um, it just takes a little practice. So, um, Ellen. It. Yes. Hi, it's Story. Hey, Story. Hi. Don't tell anybody, particularly the teacher, but I am using hot glue. Oh, shame on you, Story. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. I, I won't I won't say out loud that Story is using hot glue. <laughs> that's right. That's our secret. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and it just did. All right. Yeah, I know. Hot glue is permitted if that's what you're you're comfortable doing. We didn't want hot glue out with um, kids. Um, um, if anyone was joining in, we didn't want any safety Hi. concerns. So, okay. Hi. Um, if you make a mess with your tape, like I just did, just uh, have a piece that's not functioning for you. Just chop it off. No big deal. Any little tails that aren't sticking, chop it off. Okay. I bet that uh, no one will probably be messier than my amount of tape. <laughs> <laughs> is everything sticking together okay? That's the main yeah. question. Okay, as long as it's sticking, yeah. don't worry about too much tape. Again, what I keep saying is the, the main thing you want to do um, is to not have your tape kind of flying all over. Once you do get things stable, push it you know, kind of squeeze it and push it, get any air bubbles out and test the joints. You can pick it up, shake it a little and make sure nothing is sliding around. That's really the key to, um, to getting this to work. Okay, I'm gonna do my last cross piece, um, uh, mush these together and then we'll keep going. I should have put a lot of tape out here. Um, can I quickly add something? Sure, of course. Okay, so uh, even though I am slightly ahead, I just want to add this in general because it can still be done at this step. Um, so if one of the sides is too short, um, you can take some tape and ball it up and then add it to the bottom. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that tip. Um, can, do you want to hold, hold that up and show us what you're talking about? Okay, so uh, I did it for two of mine because uh, these sticks uh, weren't exactly the same uh, the same height. Right. I'm cutting it. So mm -hmm. um, I basically took a little bit of masking tape and I balled it up. Then okay. I uh, put it. I keep. I I thought that my other side of the tablet was the camera. Sorry. Anyway. Okay. Um, you ball it up. Then you attach. Then you put it right in the middle of a different piece of tape and then you okay. attach it on. So okay. then you will end up like with this little lump here, uh -huh. but uh, it does help it get higher up. Right, exactly. Yeah, that, that's the spirit of invention. Thank you so much for sharing that. <laughs> um, you all probably, um, just like you're doing, um, you know, anyone who has tips to share, share away, please. Um, uh, we're all learning together. I've made a bunch of these, but um, I feel like, you know, there's always, um, there can always be a better way or a new approach that I haven't thought of. So, um, you know, so please do share. Thank you so much. Okay. So we should be hopefully all nearing um, the end of our, you know, getting our cross pieces on, whether you're doing a square base or a triangular base. Okay. And I'm just gonna do mine quickly. Under, on the diagonal, lay this down, wrap it, and squish it. And um, one more thing, um, as you go along, um, after you've got something that looks roughly like that, 
um, you do want to do one more piece of tape or a few more in the middle of your X. Um, and even if you have a triangular bottom, um, you know, just find a way to get these cross pieces right in the middle, middle of your X to get that stuck together as well. Skinny piece of tape, wrap it around and around a few times. Oops, see I have something unstable here and it just started sliding. Oops. There we go. Um, excuse me. Um, so at this point, since I did get a bit distracted before, I have this. Um, may I get a few things that I missed? Sure, uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, of course. All right. Okay, so um, how are we doing on time, everybody? Um, do you have something that looks approximately like this or you need more time? Okay, nice, very nice, that's beautiful. Okay, I see thumbs up. Uh, let me switch over to a gallery view here so I can see you all. How are we doing? I see. Okay, looks like uh, most of us are pretty good with the base. Uh, okay. At this point, to adjust my workspace a little, I'm going to turn off my camera. Sure, no worries. Thank you for sharing that. Thanks, Maya. There are a few, a few rules that you have to get used to when you do Zoom school, so. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> you're, you're way ahead of me. <laughs> All right. So I see some people still working on their finishing touches of their base, okay. Um, I'm going to I'm going to continue talking just a little bit now, um, even while you're working, if you can hear me. OK, let me switch back out of speaker view here. Let's see. OK, so I'm going to um, just talk a little bit about the candle holder section of this. Um, really, almost any kind of piece of cardboard will do. It could be, you know, a little strong. It can be a little floppy. This is just, um, I routinely, well, I don't eat cereal anymore, but when I used to, I would um, always salvage the, um, the boxes um, because the cardboard is so nice. And um, I, I believe in recycling and upcycling. So you could certainly take a piece of, of this cardboard, uh, like from a, a cereal or cracker box, or if you have, um, I'm looking for my other piece must be underneath something. Anyway, if you have a different piece of cardboard, I'm gonna fish around and see where my other one went. It doesn't really matter. Um, um, same thing with when you get pizza from the store, there's a circle uh, in it uh, of cardboard. So then you can get it out of the oven. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there are so many sources of, um, you know, recycled cardboard. Um, you can't go wrong with this part of it. Um, so when you get to that point and you're ready, um, this is really up to you how big you want to make it. Um, basically, um, we are going to be putting a size of cardboard. Let's see, I want to make sure I have all of my um, gadgets and recycled items here. Give me just one moment. So um, if you don't have um, a toilet tissue tube handy, no worries. Um, and you could even probably do this step later, but I, I think it's a little easier to do it while you have um, an open work surface here. Um, let's see if I can show you this again, if we can get a good angle here, not that one. Um, I don't know if you can see inside. Can everybody see what I'm showing you? Yes. Okay, so I have like a little rectangle or square of cardboard here. Um, I might have glued this one on to my sticks. And then um, I took some uh, 
toilet tissue tubes and I just uh, chopped off, you know, um, you should have gotten a little um, LED, you know, a flameless candle with your kit if you picked up a kit. And if not, you will need some kind of a candle, hopefully flameless, because we don't want to have any uh, fire in here, hopefully. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, look at your candle. Um, sorry, I'm moving off screen for just a minute. Here's the size of the candle. It's, I don't know, probably less, it's probably an inch tall. So just kind of gauge how tall you want this to be. Really, this is just so that you can access your candle and pull it in and out and turn it on when you want to, you know, so it's not on all the time. Um, so make this short enough that you can reach in, get to your candle and that it's not gonna cover up the flame. That's important, of course, all right? Um, and then it can be a little tricky to glue it onto the cardboard because you're gluing on an edge here. Um, there's a bunch of ways we can do that. You can try it with straight glue, just, you know, Elmer's glue or whatever you have there, white glue, and um, just put a little ring of glue or you can trace the tube and put a line of glue right there. Okay, whatever method makes sense to you. If you're really having trouble getting it to stick, I'll show you another method. Um, let me just chop this for a minute. Get it chopped up. Just make a little square here, a rectangle. I'm not measuring anything today, he likes to do that. So another thing you could do is to make little uh, tabs. This, this is if you can't get your cardboard tube or your if, you know, ring of paper um, to stick to this, you can make some little tabs and glue them like so. Everybody see what I'm doing here? Just make some little tiny little tabs out of cardboard put glue on the bottom, glue one side to the tube, and glue the other side to your base, okay? And you can go, you can go around with a few of those and that will secure it and it won't go anywhere, okay? Um, Any questions? Question. I have a question. Uh, so if you accidentally made your base super duper tiny that uh, it like fits the candle, uh, should you do this step? So that your base fits the candle. Can you can you show me what you mean? My base ended up being super duper tiny. Super tiny. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Because I, I accidentally uh, got distracted and then sort of did this. <laughs> no, that's that's fine. Um, I can't. Let's see. I'm gonna try to see if I can see. If you do, you want to hold it up or not? It's uh, being held up. Okay, hold on, I'm on the wrong view here. Uh, oh, okay, I see where you are. So yeah. it's Maya, right? Oh, that's really cool, I love it. Yeah, you're, you're, you're ahead of us, that's fine. Um, I would say um, improvise. <laughs> okay. um, I, I, I can just make something uh, to put on the side so it just doesn't fall out. Yeah, yeah, um, I think, you know, you can, you know, you can take this, this is just a suggestion to get you going. But if you have a better way and, you know, fitting, you made a really nice shape there. I really like that. So yeah, this is just to give it something to sit on. If you feel like your project doesn't need it, no worries. What you do want to be able to do though, is to be able to turn your candle on and off. And you, so you need to be able to hopefully reach in there and be able to remove it when you want to turn it off or turn it on. Does that make sense? Okay, so work it out your own way, whatever makes sense, okay? All right, so I'm gonna get mine going here very quickly, if I can. Ellen? Yes. You can also make tabs on the bottom yes. of the tube. Absolutely, absolutely. That's a perfect way to do it. Yeah, you can, you can do that. Um, I love, um, working with cardboard and construction. So yeah, that's, let me go back to our, my other view here. So that suggestion was to do some tabs all the way around. 
Only thing with that that's a little tricky with these toilet tissue tubes is that they're wound a certain way. You know, they have like a, they're glued a certain way and they can start falling apart. But if you want to do that, that works really well too. Just, you know, cut so like a fringe almost, bend them back and put glue on the bottom and you're ready to go. Like something like that, is that what you were referring to? Okay. In fact, I think I like your idea a lot. <laughs> All right. I'm going to trim mine just a little bit. It's not too tall. So at this point, um, sorry, I didn't alert you. You will need some glue. Just straight glue, not watered. Okay. Let's do that. All right. And if that glue is taking too long to dry for any reason, you could add a piece of masking tape and just reinforce it till it uh, till it has a chance to set. Do that for. Let's see. All right, I'm doing a rough version today. I'm not gonna make this one pretty, but um, I'm just taping some of these tabs down so that the glue starts to set and I can move on. Uh, when you've got that much in place, uh, you can put a little, uh, you know, a couple dots of glue and glue that here. Or you could put a loop of tape. You can attach it with tape. You're not really gonna see it. Okay, so you decide how you want to fasten it just as long as it's stable. So we're going to end up with something that looks sort of like that. I'm going to clear my work area a little bit here. All right. Okay, so I'm going to um, uh, please, of course, um, keep working. Um, I know Maya and maybe other folks um, are ahead of where I am. Um, I want to, you know, give everyone time to get these steps done. Obviously, we're not done yet. We're just getting our, our base done. Okay, so the next step, as you might imagine, is to decide what are you doing with the rest of this, right? What shape is it going to be? How tall? And so on and so on. So, um, Think about what you want. You can do um, kind of a pyramid shape 
um, you know, you could connect a couple of these uh, into triangles and meet them at the top. You see what I'm doing? So I'm making probably four of these, right? Four angled pieces connected by tape. And when we get those taped into the corners, if you lean them in, it will form a pyramid shape. And that's actually a really nice shape. Um, I think it's really appealing. Um, and so this was the first of those type of lanterns that I made. I don't know if you can see it well, Put some pine branches on there. Um, I was experimenting with leaving, um, I'll call these the feet kind of sticking out. So um, that's how it turned out. Some people um, make more of, I guess you could say like a teepee shape at the top. And instead of just covering these, here, let me hold up this one. Instead of covering them here, they leave them open at the top like that. And you might want to do that. And you could take a bunch of those and bind them together and leave the top kind of open. That's another thing you can do. Um, if you want to go tall with your lantern, um, again, like we did, or some of you did with your cross piece on the bottom, you can connect two skewers, whatever length you want, and you can make um, a really tall construction. And you, again, you probably just want to, you know, match them up. Okay. So I think you should all hopefully have enough sticks to do any of those options. Um, if you go for this option, um, probably two sticks on each side is plenty. So one, two, four, six, eight, if I'm not mistaken, you'd need eight, eight more pieces. You can bind these in the middle. Okay. Any questions about that? If so, I had a question. If I have a triangle base mm -hmm. and I want to do one like you did with sort of then the straight up and down sides and a triangle on the top, do I do? Should I make the tri the top triangle first and then attach it, or should I put the sides up and then? So, are you talking about? Yeah. It's Elaine, yeah. right? Okay, yes. let me go back to my view so I can see what I'm holding up here. So if you can see mine, yes. um, what I did is I constructed uh, squares. So I have square one, square two, okay. square three. So these are three squares that are that are placed upon a triangle base. Wonderful. Thank you. That, so does much. that make sense? Sure. Absolutely. Perfect. Makes perfect sense. And I never would have thought of it in a million years. So thank you. <laughs> this one was a happy accident. I think, as I mentioned, this actually started out, it was going to be a huge uh, rectangle or square. And I just didn't like it. It looked too boxy. So I pulled it apart and I just smushed three sides together. And I said, I like that form a lot better. <laughs> I really like it. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Good. I'm going to grab a drink. If anyone needs uh, a break, um, a tea, celery juice, <laughs> uh, feel free to drop in and out as you wish. Um, so at this point, um, Francesca, are you still online with us? Yes. OK. Um, if everyone is comfortable, um, I'd love to give you a little um, time. I don't want to be talking through um, your process here. Uh, is, are we supposed to be attaching the vertical pieces? So yes, the answer is yes. Um, and if I didn't explain that, I apologize. So um, depending again, um, I'm just going to grab one of these for now. OK, so this is, if you need any help with this part, this is kind of the same process as before. Um, we want, let me switch my view. Give me one sec. Okay, so can everybody see me? Good, okay. So if you haven't done this already and you were having any trouble, so we have our base pretty much solid. Well, mine isn't so solid apparently. Um, 
you're going to be making whatever kind of construction you want for the sides of your lantern. Okay. And so again, same procedure, grab some tape. Okay. And do it the way that is most uh, workable for you. I like to go from underneath my, my uh, base. I go underneath. I grab whatever my stick is. I place it on the corner. Let's see if I can get that a little closer. Too bad our tape and our um, sticks are the same color. And I just glom them together with tape, making sure that everything connects. So I'm going from underneath up. Okay. That aside. And again, the main thing is make sure that all these um, joints connect really firmly with tape. If you're not sure, by wiggling them around. Okay. Underneath, make sure the tape is firmly stuck on at least one portion of your stick before you go any further. And then loop it in and out. You can tear it, twist it. Okay. So something like that, a little sturdier. So, um, oops. My lantern got very lopsided. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, Once again, making it a bit taller on one of the pegs. Is a bit taller. What's that? Uh, with crumbling up a piece of masking tape and then adding okay. it. Got it. Nice. Okay. Well, I can see we've got a, a creative spirit here. He's figuring out all kinds of solutions to things that come up. Um, I want to share um, um, what I'm working on. If you can just look up at the screen, I know you may be likely, um, you know, your hands may be full. Let's see, how can I do this? I've got a tall structure. Um, I hadn't tried this kind of um, TP look before, but I kind of like it for these lanterns. So again, I had the square base. Here's my cross piece. Um, I didn't stick on my my uh, candle holder. But anyway, what I wanted to get at is I joined uh, two pieces, two sticks to make a tall lantern. Okay. Um, so I want to just show you something else that um, can be important as we start approaching the next phase, which would be papering our lanterns. Okay. So here I have a lantern that's kind of big, right? And if I were to just paper it, as is, the paper will not have a lot to grab onto. So what I really recommend is putting in some cross pieces. Um, they can be very formal or they can be informal. When I say that, you could do a design like here, I'm just putting in a stick like on a diagonal, okay? Or uh, let me hold up this one that is already made. Um, if you can see this tall lantern, let's see if I can angle that in. Now you probably can't see it in this light. Here you go. So this one actually has a whole new box, a whole new, like a base section. It's a square all the way around. And so what does that do? Um, it's a support for your paper. Um, and a structural support. So like if I, and this doesn't have to be measured any particular way, but 
Like in this case, I might decide to put in um, a support going all the way around. And again, when we go to paper, that will give us a place to grab the paper and put some glue on there. And so the paper won't just be a giant piece of paper with nothing to support it in the middle. Does that make sense? So if you have a very small lantern, it won't make as much difference, um, but I kind of recommend it. The other thing is that it's neat in a way because you can kind of break up the space um, and use it to design your lantern. Um, you will probably end up seeing um, that structure. If you can see the stick through my paper, I'm trying to angle it right. You can kind of see it and it's, it just gives it a neat um, appearance. So here's one that I started. I left it undone to be able to show you. I actually ripped it up. I didn't like what I did, but you can see uh, kind of the skeleton of it from the inside and the outside, right? So I have broken up this space like vertically, you know, up and down. Um, here I went, I made an X on the bottom, okay? So it gives you some creative choices um, for when you start applying your paper. You know, you can vary up your colors and so on, okay? Any questions on that? See, everybody's working, so I'm going to do the same. Um, if you decide to do that, um, again, to add um, uh, sticks to support your structure, the idea is exactly the same as what you've been doing. Um, I don't know if you're watching, but I'm going to do a quick demo. I've got my tape on the outside, okay? And I'm just going to tape my stick in, fold the tape around, and make sure that I have a, a great um, secure space in there. Okay, keep wrapping and then you can support that again. I might go this way, so I'm gonna trim it. Just gonna eyeball it. Gonna trim it like that. Okay, oops, flying sticks. And I'm gonna tape it in. And I'm going from the outside, connecting to the stick, connecting to the frame. You can see that. Connecting to the frame, making a strong connection, and then pushing it all together. closer to the camera if I can. Oops. And if you make any mistakes, it doesn't fit right, just uh, trim the tape off and start again.
There we go. That looks fantastic. I, I like this shape a lot. I'm kind of getting into it. <laughs> I like the, uh, the top very much. Uh, and uh, my question is, how do I want to think about decorating it? <laughs> Might keep it very simple. <laughs> kind of just like looking at the structure itself. Now I cheated, I have some really skinny tape, so I'm gonna wind this around. Bind everything tightly. And I'm gonna give it a test. Oh, nothing falling apart, that's a good sign. <laughs> Let's see. Can I show mine? Sure, absolutely. Mine ended up in a spiral pattern. We're gonna, we'll probably all, um, anyone who is um, comfortable sharing, we'll probably do that um, a little closer to the end, but um, I, I don't wanna um, distract people if they're in the middle of working, it's up to you. If you wanna hold it up now, um, um, you can do that, or we can wait just a little while and, uh, get a little closer, get our next step done. I want to be mindful of the time because it is 4.30. Um, can I just um, do a little check in here? Um, who feels like their structure is pretty well underway? Because I see somebody, looks like Lori is, are you papering already? Okay. <laughs> I can't hear you, Lori, but uh, you're muted. Um, so some of you got a jump on papering, which is perfectly fine. Um, and uh, if you want to do that, um, who would like a little bit of coaching with the papering process? Anybody? We're ready to paper. Okay, here. ready to paper. Perfect. I would like coaching. Okay, super. Um, yeah, me too. <laughs> I did a lot of trial and error. Um, let me get just a little sip of juice here and wet my whistle. Okay. Um, so this is a step um, I have seen. Um, um, various ways to do the papering. So one of the common ones involves um, taking your white glue and diluting it approximately half and half with water. Um, you don't need to be really precise. You don't want your glue really, really, really wet and drippy, but you don't want it really full strength thick either. So um, you will use, you know, a good amount of glue. So um, does everybody want to um, just take a momentary break? I'm not sure where you have your glue and your brush and stuff. And if you want to um, clear off your table, if you have any little wood scraps, you know, little um, points, whatever you might have on your table. Um, we're not rushing anybody, but we want to get to the papering stage, obviously. Um, I'm going to clear my own table here. 
I didn't quite finish with my structure, but I'll I'll do that later. So I'm going to move off camera for just a moment. I'm going to grab my glue and a little bit of water, and we'll get going. Question. So here is where the messier part comes in, obviously. Actually, I have a quick question. Sure. Um, is it okay to do this in like a paper cup? Um, you you could. Um, I I have a foam brush. You should have gotten one with your kit if you've mm -hmm. got a library kit. As long as it um, gives you a little room i i kind of like something more like a tray it's totally up to you i've got so many recycled trays in my home that i just grab something but um what i'm going to do is i i've got a like a standard this is a four ounce uh bottle of elmer's it's just washable school glue um standard glue or any white glue will work i'm going to pour most of that into my tray um, but I'm going to reserve some straight glue, you know, some undiluted glue, um, because I want to have some of that available to add some things at the end and also to get my frame started. So I'm just going to, um, I'm not really measuring, I'm just going to pour some into my tray. And then I'm going to add a little bit of water, make it a little more soupy than it is now. And then if you have a foam brush or any, um, I recommend kind of a wide brush for this part. And give it a good stir. So my glue is a little bit thick, but you can see it's drippy, but not, not watery, not too watery, okay? Just a little dab more water. So here's the thing about papering. Um, there are some schools of lantern making that advocate, uh, let me get some paper as I speak, that advocate taking a sheet of tissue paper and um, coating the whole tissue paper with glue before you even start applying it to your frame. Right. There is another school of thought, um, and I tried this out. I kind of like. I think this one is a little less messy. Um, give me just a moment. I want to grab my white tissue paper here. So okay. So I've got some white, plain old white tissue paper. Um, if you've got a kit, you should have gotten one. So this tissue paper is not super strength, right? It's um, plain old, you know, like tissue paper like you would use to wrap a gift or something like that. So um, it will tear, right? Um, it's not uh, indestructible. And um, so you have to be respectful of the paper. Um, if you were doing a very fancy lantern, you might use some Japanese um, handmade paper or you know some other type of um, kind of transparent or translucent paper. But we've got the, the old fashioned tissue. So um, I respect its properties and I just want to handle it gently. So I smooth it out. Um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm go actually gonna put a little bit of undiluted glue on my frame, okay? Where I'm gonna start my gluing. Let's see if I can get this bottle going. I'm just gonna, can you see what I'm doing? I'm just, actually uh, gluing, put regular glue on my frame. Okay, and then I'm going to, um, I'm not measuring right now, I'm just going to put this on here. Okay, so I'm just going to paper from here for now. Okay, so this is pretty strong. I have a support down here. I have this bar, you know, kind of holding things. Okay. If I wanted to, I could, you know, work with a big piece of tissue and I could do the same thing all around. And when I run out or I need to patch something, I could just keep going. Okay. 
The other thing you could do is to go one section at a time. And what you might want to do is try wrapping onto your frame. Can you see my fingers? I'm kind of wrapping neatly. So I'm getting that tissue paper to stick to the wood directly using undiluted glue. I like this method because it feels kind of secure. Okay. And I don't think the paper is going anywhere and you're not really stressing it out too much. If you coat the paper with glue right off the bat, um, it gets hard to pick up. It gets really wet and messy and it can be a little um, fussy to work with. So um, in this case, I think I'm gonna give this paper a trim, okay? And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just gonna trim it so that I have some excess here hanging off and then I'm gonna bend it under. I've got glue on here already. So now it has a place to attach. Can you see that okay? And you can probably figure out your own method um, perfectly fine, but this is how I started um, doing this. And then, you know, pull it as tight as you can without ripping it. Okay, now I'm working sideways, so I can't see what I'm doing here. <laughs> uh, try that again. And you may need to reposition this or whatever you need to do. Okay, so once you have a piece of paper attached and it's, you know, pretty fairly tight and wrapped, then make sure your glue is really nicely blended, no lumps or anything. And if you have a foam brush, it's great. Just brush off any extra glue on the edge of your tray like that. And then just gently, gently give it a coating. Okay, and what this does as soon as this glue dries, it will be, um, the paper will be a lot stronger, okay? And that's why we do it. If you just had straight tissue paper with no glue, um, it would probably be a lot more fragile. So again, when this glue dries, it's gonna make a more, um, you know, uh, a, a stronger structure for you, okay? and then smooth out any bumps. Again, I'm kind of working sideways, so I can't quite see what I'm doing. Does that make sense? Um, Ellen, is the idea that we layer um, paper on top of paper? That's a perfect question. You actually beat me to it. So um, here's the thing. So if any of you um, or many of you are familiar with paper mache, you know how in paper mache you're doing lots and lots of layers um, this is not the same as paper mache. So the idea is not to do tons of layers. Um, why, number one, we have, um, in our case, we just have a little tiny um, LED candle. And um, the more layers of paper um, go on here, um, the less you'll be able to see the light shining through. So I would say two layers is probably the most that I would do. Um, now, if you need to at any point patch your paper, um, you know, something starts to really disintegrate while you're working on it and you need to apply a little patch, you can always just, you know, rip off like a little, it could be a jagged edge that might even blend in better, just patch where you need to. Um, again, these are, these are really kind of um, adaptable to your own personal style of making art. Um, Perfection is not expected. <laughs> so in answer to your question though, yeah, I would say two layers is probably the most you wanna go. Um, also the other thing is um, a lot of the traditional lanterns are just white. You know, they might have um, some natural materials, leaves or something like that um, built in. Um, some people go all white, others um, like to put on lots of colors. Um, what I would say is if you have um, very colorful paper, especially darker colors, I wouldn't, for example, I wouldn't put a whole section of dark paper here. Why? Because it's going to blot out that light. Um, so the more, um, let's say, translucent, you know, it's going to let some light out, but it's also going to kind of mute it. Um, and that's um, what I would say, you know, makes a really beautiful lantern. But of course, experiment. Um, um, if you have, like, if you got a kit from the library, I know we um, 
included some really uh, beautiful papers. Well, I hope you think they're beautiful. <laughs> and if you brought your own, I'm sure you picked what you like. Um, experiment, you know, cut some shapes. Um, um, one thing I want to add about colored tissue paper while I'm thinking of it, um, some colored tissue paper is called bleeding tissue, mm -hmm. um, meaning that the colors will run they, you know, they'll just kind of run as soon as the paper gets wet um, or wet glue on it or something like that, the colors will start kind of spreading out and you may not like that effect. If you try something out with this, um, you're decorating and you go, ah, I, you know, it's not how I really thought I wanted it to be. Um, just pull it off and, and try again, you know, no harm done. I've done that countless times. <laughs> okay. Thank so, you. Sure. I thought because we have white tissue and then fancy tissue, I thought maybe the white goes first and then the fancy goes on top of the white. I, yeah, I understand your question. Yeah, um, we include, I picked out the, those papers. Um, I kind of tried to curate them for you. <laughs> um, if we were at the library, you would have had your pick and you would have you know, been able to kind of make your own combinations. But um, since you have the options, um, I would say, um, you know, again, if you have like, uh, let me hold one up um, that was in our little kit here. Let's see what I've got because I brought some home with me. Like this, this is, I don't know if you can see it. This is a metallic um, paper, like a sort of coppery color. I personally wouldn't put a whole panel of that on. I wouldn't put this on as a whole second layer. I would use this more as an accent. Um, so if you have something very light, uh, let's see, if you got anything like this, where it's kind of light, the light is going to go through, you could probably use this as a layer all by itself. That makes sense? Yes, thank you so much. Sure, you're welcome. Do, do we just put paper on the outside? Yes, on the outside only. You don't need it on the inside. When you reach into the inside, when you're done with the papering, um, you're gonna see it's gonna look a little rough on the inside um, and you can just trim that down when it's dry. But yeah, just on the outside. And again, just curl that paper around the edges so it's um, touching the wood somewhere. Okay. I want to show you, I don't want to talk too much while you're working, but I want to show you one other um, thing that's kind of fun to do. Um, I just grabbed um, this piece of metallic paper. By the way, if you got metallic tissue, if you got a kit, um, only thing with this stuff, it's really pretty, but um, it might resist the glue a little bit because it has this kind of slippery finish on it. So if you put glue on here, you might find the glue kind of beating up like little kind of little balls of glue, just smooth it and it will um, eventually cooperate. But what I like to do, I'm just gonna, maybe I'll cut this. If I can show you what I mean quickly. I like to use uh, some of these darker papers um, and make almost like a fabric trim. Um, you could twist it. So you start with a strip and you could, you know, twist the paper and apply a little glue to get it to hold together, or you could fold it, kind of roll it, and then um, it makes a neat kind of dividing line on the, some of the seams, you know, if you get it the way you like. So that's another decorating element that you might like. We had just a quick question backtracking a little bit. The uh -huh. glue the glue that's in your tray, that's diluted, right? Yes. And it's diluted with water? Yes. And is it roughly one to one? 
Uh, yeah, 50 50. Um, yeah, um, I personally go a little more on the side of the glue and a just a tiny bit less water, you know, right. just kind of check it out and see. Um, again, if you imagine tissue paper, how flimsy it usually is, if you go too watery with your glue, um, your right. paper can collapse. So, yeah. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. We have to bow out because we have little ones we eat early, but we wanted to say thank you very much and happy new year. Thank you. And the very same to you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Happy new year to you and your family. Have a wonderful, healthy new year. All right. You too. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 <laughs> Uh, something slightly annoying happened. So I don't think the person who put the bag of snowflakes into my kit remembered to close the bag. Oops. Uh -oh. Yeah. Sorry about uh -oh. that. We were, we were working under great uh, a great timeline there and I do apologize for that. Did you manage to salvage most of them? No, they're all salvageable. It's just they're scattered all over the bag. Oh, I'm so sorry. I apologize for that. That wasn't intentional. Uh, your table or your floor must be looking um, pretty, pretty um, festive by now. Actually, no, just just the inside of the bag. I oh, made just sure the bag. Not they didn't fall out when you opened it. Okay. <laughs> I made sure to not dump it. There you go. <laughs> That was not supposed to happen. If you don't know what's going to be inside of a bag, don't jump all of it out. That's right. Yeah, it's open with care, right? Exactly. All right. Well, I'm trying to catch up to you all here. Let's see. So I'm looking at the clock. It looks like we are. Um, nearing the end of our um, time formally here. Um, um, I'm, I imagine that uh, some of you are still working on the decorating part and you can um, take as long as you want, of course, with that. Um, I'll just add a couple of words um, in case you find that you have to um, say goodbye, you know, right at, at 5 p.m. Um, if you wanted to add things um, now in the Monterey uh, Public Library kits that were distributed, um, we put in uh, like a tube of glitter glue and we put in, you know, maybe different things, some stickers, some snowflakes, whatever it might be. If you want to add those elements, um, I kind of recommend waiting. Um, if they're a little bit heavy, I, I recommend waiting until this um, glue has dried a bit. So you want your paper to be, you know, kind of strong before you go adding a bunch of stuff to it. Um, if you had something, um, if you don't have time to watch because you're busy working, um, no problem. But I'm going to try to hold this up. So this one, if you can see, um, this was one of my first lanterns. So this has um, some um, pine, um, pine branches, pine needles, um, I guess you call them that I just um, picked up here locally. Um, and I just stuck these on with a little bit of um, diluted glue, but you know, not really watery once again, um, but I wanted to secure them better. So um, here at the base, I just made a little patch of tissue paper to hold that on. Um, and that's something of course that you could do with, you know, any material that doesn't seem um, too stable. And then this is um, glitter glue this kind of weird 
curvy form here. Um, so that, that was my um, experimentation. If you go on and you want further adventures in lantern making, um, for example, here, um, I found a very uh, curvy twig on the ground and I wanted to incorporate that. So something flexible um, is always nice. Um, and yeah, I think that's what I wanted to show you basically. So you don't have to stop at what, um, what ended up in your, um, in your kit bag. You can go out, scrounge around, go outdoors, even look in your recycle bin. Um, um, I was experimenting with um, very skinny pieces of cardboard and making like uh, snowflake shapes or star shapes out of uh, lightweight cardboard or heavy paper or something, and you can um, glue those on to the inside. So yeah, the sky is the limit. Okay. That's some better shape. Um, I have a quick question. Sure. So after you get the uh, paper on there, are you supposed to put the glue and water concoction all over the paper, the outside of it? Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, and so again, I'm just uh, right there at that step. So I, you know, kind of saturate my brush, but make sure that there's no drips. And then just, I like to go in one direction only. Um, I find that it doesn't stress the paper out. You know, you don't want to scrub it or anything. Okay, and um, you might find that as you get water on this paper, um, it might change the look of the paper, you know, it might have an uneven, um, you know, um, appearance to it, but no big deal. Okay, and you might need to pull it a little tighter while it's wet. Yeah, go over the whole thing. Um, probably just going over it once with a glue solution will probably be enough. Also, if you don't mind getting your hands wet slash dirty, um, I find it also easy to apply the uh, mixture and then coat and then just wrap it on. Uh -huh. You can wrap it on. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, there is a bunch of ways to do this. Um, you know, a lot of um, art making and crafting, um, some of it is very precise and you do it only one way, but there's a lot of things that are trial and error. Um, and um, it's Maya, right? Do I have your name right? Um, you know, you have tried out ways of doing things that um, that maybe other people didn't think of. So um, that's that's the cool thing about creativity, you know. Yeah. There's usually more than one way to do things. It took me a second to realize that I still had my mic on. Uh, and I was trying to figure out how to be able to unmute my mic with gluey fingers. With gluey fingers. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Small problem, but it's fine. <laughs> okay. So I'm looking at the clock here. Um, again, I am sure not rushing anyone, but um, we have a couple of minutes left. Um, I don't know how far I'm going to actually put my gallery view back on so I can get a better look. Um, at this point, does anybody want to hold up um, before we, you know, say goodbye um, for now? Do uh, you want to hold up what you're working on? Or alternately, does anyone, um, I can ask Francesca if, uh, Francesca, if we have um, a few extra minutes if you want to stay online for a few more minutes if you think you have any extra questions or anything um yes the time is up to you ellen okay well i am open to staying on um i'm not rushing anyone i want to see what you're making here i would also like hanging out but it is necessary oh i see a beautiful uh triangular land is that mary joe Yes, it's a little bit saturated with the water and glue. Yes. Uh -huh. Get the cable in, so yeah. Well, um, and when it does, like I said, it'll be more like a tough uh, skin there. Um, let me add, um, before I forget, um, I know you're all working hard, or many of you are. <clears throat> um, I'm not going to get out of this view so I can hold this up better. 
So um, this is totally choice, of course. Um, I left a flap here. I didn't get as advanced as Maya did with a little doorway to put my candle, but I kind of left a little flap open so I can insert my candle. And the other thing I was experimenting with was legs. Now these weren't put on very neatly, but I just sliced down a toilet tissue too. I like the handmade kind of slightly messy look. And um, I just basically glued these on. I know they could be done a little neater, but I don't care right now. <laughs> uh, so that's another thought. Um, and just as we made these um, uh, candle holders, you know, you could cut little, I'm going to pull mine off, um, see if I can get this loose. You could cut these little tabs um, as a way to stick that on the bottom, or you can try just uh, like a thick glue, you know, full strength glue. So that can be a neat um, addition. Okay, the other thing is, um, let's see. I think it fell off, but like if you find like a decorative um, cap, like I don't know, from an olive oil bottle or something that's you know kind of um, metallic, okay, you could put caps on here, you know, to make it look, give it kind of a sculptural look. So um, the sky's the limit. I'm gonna stop where I am and I'm gonna light a candle here and try this out. I didn't finish this, but. See if it works. Oh, battery well, fell out. Thank you so much for a wonderful project and also the library for all of the materials. This has been just fantastic. Thank wonderful, you. Wonderful, wonderful. And thank you. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Okay. And everyone else in class. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Ellen, well, hi, this is Karen, and I messed up on the time. So I checked in about 10. Are we checked in so many other directions? But for now, um, I'll just uh, say a final Happy New Year. I wish you a wonderful 2021 uh, health, happiness, um, and uh, good energy, and um, um, a better world for us all. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you.